Hello my fellow cat lovers and welcome to part 7 of this tutorial on modeling a spiral casing using Autodex Inventor. In this part we are going to be working on flow guides and basically these components depicted as D2 and D3 so these green and blue components and we are going to start with this guide D2 and the purpose is basically to bend the flow so that it enters the impeller at an optimal angle. The position and the shape of these D2 components will be controlled in the master part. And since we have three of these components, we are going to later use the pattern tool in the assembly to create the remaining components. So let's go back to Inventor and we are going to switch to the master part and we will create a new sketch on the X, Y plane. So we could have used this WP location sketch, but it is a little bit crowded now. And since we are going to use the make part tool, we want to derive a sketch with the minimum geometry possible inside. Okay, so we have the new sketch created and maybe we should remove this tree from the graphic area so turn off the visibility now let's have a look on the print to see what we will need to define the geometry of this guide d2 so we will need to borrow from one of the previous sketches this line so it will be from the center line and we will also need this 765 millimeters cycle so this one because as you can see here we should have the this arc of the guide tangent to the cycle we will need to add two lines with 14 degrees angle between them and the first line will be at 76 degrees from the line we will borrow from the center line sketch okay so we will show this sketch so visibility then we will use the project tool to include this line then okay and we will hide this again and the cycle we need is inside this WP location sketch so we will show it and we will again use the project geometry and we will project this cycle inside our sketch then we do ok and hide this ok now we will we look normal to the sketch plane and the next step is to add the lines and this cycle at 930 millimeters diameter okay so first we add the cycle so from the center point we will have a 930 millimeters then the two lines you can see how i am using the marking menu to speed up the command input so the first line this one right click then move to the second one like so and then the dimension between this and this and that should be 76 degrees and these two should be 14 degrees okay now we can start to build the profile of the guide which is not something fancy so just two arcs connected by two lines we can do that by using first a cycle so we connect a cycle here then another one there then we will add two lines and lines again so second one then we will be adding some constraint tangent there and there like so maybe this one and okay then we'll make these two lines parallel and we will add a constraint between this and that so that we have 
the so that we have this tangency created now another one for this so tangent and that okay and we will add a dimension between the two lines and finally to make the 25 millimeters and then we will have to use the trim tool to remove the necessary portion okay but i don't want to do it like this so i am going to show you a different way to do that so instead of creating the profile using cycle and lines we are going to use the line tool only to create the profile in a continuous way without interruption so line tool we create the first line something like this then we move the mouse back to the end point of the line press the left mouse button and drag as you can see an arc is created and then we release the mouse button the second point of the arc is created then we'll move and make sure that we have a tangent invert at this end point and that these two end points are aligned so now we click to create the second line as you can see these two are parallel already we move back to this end point and press down the left mouse button and drag again and connect it to this end point and there we are you can see we have the profile created in one single step using one tool okay so now we will just add the thickness dimension like so 25 and we will using the connect tool to connect this end point to that this center point to the end point and then the tangent constraints like that and there we go as you can see it was quickly over and we make sure that we turn so let's do okay we turn all these to construction and maybe something we should take note of is the length of this component so the length should be 130 so let's check if we have the correct dimension so we will use the dimension tool select this and that and as you can see the dimension is created between the center point so if we want to have the overall length we will have to add to this value 25 millimeters so two times the radius but we are lazy we don't want to to do the math so the way to create directly the overall dimension is to use the dimension tool as it is and you select the first input for your dimension then for the second input pay attention on the icon displayed underneath the cursor at the right side as you can see as i move the cursor around the arc the icon is changed to this one and this means that we are going to create a tangent dimension now so if i click as you can see i have the dimension created and the value is 143.003 which is far more than what we expected so we will click to place the dimension and we will have this warning and uh, which is basically telling us that the dimension will be a driven dimension and this is okay because as you can see all the line and arcs are all dark blue so the geometry is already fully constrained so we will accept to have a driven dimension created okay so why do we have 143 this is maybe because one of these value is not correct on the print and there is no way for us to know which one is incorrect so what we are going to do is just to accept the things as they are and move on with this tutorial we will never know which one is the correct and where is the mistake since we do not have the original design intent i am just going to finish this sketch and right away rename it as guide guide underscore dish two and now i can invoke the make part tool and the name will be 
D2 and we want to use this sketch guide D2 and as parameters we will use the deflector length so this because the component extends from this face of the first ring to the face of the second ring and the distance in between is 380 so we have this we will unlink sheet metal stands we will use a standard part template and again because i close the assembly between two recording sessions i will input the assembly name again so spiral casing and okay and we are in the assembly and as we did plenty of time before we will just double click to enter the standard modeling environment and then invoke our extra tool we will select this region and for the distance we will pose to the deflector length parameter and we want to make it symmetric so it is properly centered inside the casing and then ok now we can return and go back to the assembly and what we are going to do now is to make a section view so that we can see inside the casing so we will again use this half section view and we are going to select the x y plane and the side displayed is what we want so okay and next we are going to use the pattern tool to create the two remaining instances of this component so we will activate the pattern tool and the feature will be this component and we want a circular pattern so for the axis we will use the z axis so this one as you can see we have four instances at 90 degree but we only want to have three at the end at this point we cannot do anything about that so we are just going to accept the pattern creation for now so we'll click on ok and next we are going to look onto the assembly tree and select this pattern component one feature or group then we are going to look for the occurrence we do not want to keep so it will be this one and we are going to right click on it and select suppress and this occurrence will be removed from the graphic area and also from the bill of material later okay so with this we are done with this component so we are just going to remove the section view so and section view and you are going to go back to the print to see what we have to do for the next component the purpose of this second guide at the outlet is to break as much as possible the turbulent flow coming from the impeller and the benefit will be a reduced amount of vibration on the structure and the generated amount of noise okay so okay now to define this component i am not really sure how to proceed but i think i am going to start from the master part again and i am going to use the work plane we have at this location so it will be if i recall correctly wp19 and i am going to also use the thickness parameter which is 12 millimeters and from there i think we will later use the inner face of these two sheet metal components so this one which is 19 to 20 and this one 20 21 we will see how it works out and once the first one will be created we will use the pattern tool again to create two additional instances and this is basically the plan so let's get to it so first we move back to the master part and we will right away invoke the make part tool we want to select this work plan then we will add the thickness as parameter 
we are going to use a standard part template so we do not need to have this option activate we will input d3 as the name and then the template the standard part as i mentioned before then okay and now we have the component in place so we will enter the edit mode like so and the first thing we want to do is to create an offset plane at 30 millimeters 30 millimeters yes 30 millimeters so that we will start the component from that plane okay so we switch back to inventor and using this offset from plane tool we input 30 millimeters and since it is not in the correct direction we will add a minus in front and then enter to accept we will hide this and now we can sketch the profile i will use the cross section of the component so onto this plane i will create a sketch let's orient the view normal to the screen and basically what i will create is a, a rectangle by two points so something like this so we make sure it is big enough because we will have to trim it back again and we'll add a thickness dimension so this one and we make sure that the value is the thickness then enter and we also make sure that the width is centered above the origin so we will add a vertical constraint so between the origin and the center point of this line and we want to add a dimension an offset dimension from this center point to this line and for now i'm going to leave this value as 12 millimeters we are going to come back later to input the correct value we just keep it like this and we will enter a value here which will be something like let's say 500 which is not enough let's say 1000 okay good enough then we will finish the sketch and first let's extrude this so we want the size to be this value which is 300 millimeters and in the opposite direction so i will enter 300 and now i can see that the, the height is a bit too much so i'm going to oops excuse me I'm going to remove this delete and then edit this sketch so that we can change this value to something like let's say 500 which was the correct value maybe if i was wise i would have used the outlet diameter instead this is actually a good idea yeah let's make this change so what i will do is to go back to this derive part feature so edit derive part and as parameters i will also add the outlet diameter so this one then okay and now i will edit this sketch i will use the i will just divide the outlet diameter value by two so list parameter outlet diameter divided by two and then okay and finish okay so for now let's go back to the assembly so that we can create a half section view again so we will use this time the yz plane and we will edit again the part we want to hide this first and as you can see there is still an interference between these two components and i was expecting the inner diameter of this component to be equal to the outlet diameter but it seems that the thickness for this lofted flange is not on the right side maybe i should check it right now so we see that so where are the sketches so we have uh no it's the correct one so we have this like that okay so the problem is not with this component but with this one instead 
and this is because when i added this dimension i should have had it from the origin instead of from the top of this component so now we have to reattach this dimension okay since there is no way that i know of to reattach a dimension i will just select it and delete it and we and we will create it from scratch so from this origin to this endpoint we should have the outlet diameter divided by two and then okay finish the sketch and now it is looking as it should okay so now we have to trim this component so that it is no longer protruding through this one so we are going to need to borrow some face from this metal components and from there we are going to make a cut to prevent the interference the way to do that is to move to this modify panel in the 3d model tab and click on this little black arrow then select copy object so this tool will enable us to select a face or a body from a different component so we can use it now to select this face and we make sure that the associative option is checked and more importantly we will switch this composite option to the surface option so make sure that you activate this option because if you do not you will not be able to complete the next steps so now we click on ok a surface feature is added and because we use the associative option the adaptivity symbol appears in front of the feature and the part so if changes are made in the sheet metal component 2021 the feature created using this surface will adjust accordingly okay now we are going to use the surface to trim the unnecessary part of this component and as you can see there is a gap in between these two edges so we cannot use the surface in his actual state what we will do to be able to use it is to rotate the surface and the way to do that is to move us again to this modified panel and expand it to access the move bodies tool and we will select the surface as the body to move and as you can see there is a sort of translation and this is because i have this 10 millimeter offset in this x direction we do not want to move we want to rotate instead so we make sure that all these values are zero and we will click onto this button which is not that obvious and in the list we will select the rotate about line option okay now we can input an angle we will choose 180 degrees then for the rotation axis we we select this z axis and you can see on the preview the gap is now positioned on the top of the component so now we click ok to finish and we will perform the trim operation now okay to create a trim, we will use again a tool on this modified panel and this time it will be this split tool. And we have several options here so we can split a face which is the default option, trim a solid and split a solid. So what we want to do is to trim a solid. So now we have the solid automatically preselected since we have only one solid in the part and the next selection is the split tool and the split tool should be this surface and you can see this red arrow which indicates the side of the solid which will be removed we want to remove this side so we are going to flip the arrow and when we click on ok we have this error message and this is happening because as you can see here the surface is not big enough to split the part there is an explanation here as you can see check that the splitting surface completely split the body which is not the case right now so we just cancel and to fix that we are going to have to extend this surface so that it is 
big enough and the way to do so is to move to this surface panel and invoke this extend surface tool so we have to select at least one edge so we select this one and we need to input a distance to define the extent this default value should be enough so okay and now again we will try to perform the trim so trim solid the speed tool should be this one we flip the direction and okay and now as you can see the trim is performed and now the component perfectly fit the surrounding components okay we will hide this and to finish this section since this component is more likely to be produced using a water jet or a plasma cutting machine a cylindrical surface here will not be very convenient so we have to make it flat the way to do that will be to create an extrude cut so we will start a new sketch on the face and we will project this geometry this edge and maybe we will add a small gap here also and we also project this line and okay so these two lines and then we will add some lines to define a, a gap a two millimeter gap and these two millimeter gaps will be basically to account the manufacturing tolerance since these are these are all sheet metal components we should not expect crazy precise tolerance so you have to you have to make sure that this fact is taken is taken into account i am not sure why i cannot make these two lines parallel so i will maybe delete this one first then recreate a new one like so then parallel constraint between this and that and maybe it's because this one is not the line so what i will do is to delete this and create a line from this endpoint to this one i'll make sure that it is a construction line and and then i will create a parallel constraint between the line and this one and next another one so it is a bit oversized like so up to this something like that and connect it like so now i can add the vertical constraint which is already existing so horizontal constraint for this one and then some dimension so i mentioned two millimeter offset so two like this and between these two we also have this two millimeter value okay now just to constrain everything properly so this dimension will not change the value and we make sure that these two lines are coincident and this will do the trick so now we just finish the sketch then the extrude cut using the region in between then we switch the method to the cut and we make sure that we have the all option active and okay okay so far so good now we are going to go back to the assembly and create the circular pattern and then we will come back to properly size this component and end this tutorial okay so right away we use the 
pattern tool we want the cycle option the component to pattern is this one and the axis will be the z axis okay and we want three components and the angular spacing between the occurrence should be 120 degrees and okay so now if we if we end the section view we can see that we have the three components in place but we have to adjust now the distance between this component so let's go back to this one and maybe from here it will be easier so the component is inside this group component pattern tool so you double click on it to enter the edit mode and we will go back to this sketch right click and edit sketch so basically what we want to have is the minimum spacing possible between these because we already account manufacturing tolerance on this side so to do that i will first make this dimension driven so that i can adjust it freely like this then i will add two additional lines to make a triangle and we want all the sides to be equal so we use the equal constraint so this to this and this to that and we'll add additional line as you can see we we can do the math but as i am lazy i have a card tool i don't want to do that so i will just sketch everything and okay now i will add a constraint between the origin and this line and as you can see everything is fully defined and this is the proper dimension we could have made the calculation to have it now we make sure that these these lines are construction so they will not affect the extrusion so we we'll just finish the sketch go back to the assembly and as you can see the component are now as they should be okay this will conclude this part of the tutorial which was a bit messy i didn't take the proper time to prepare it as i should have done but i hope you will be able to get through it and move to the next part for the next part what we are going to do is to model the stiffness so it will be these components and then we will add these mounting brackets and these ribs to finish so i hope to see you then and thanks for watching